captioning for News 12 is brought to you by Kenneth Nugent. From the station that's on your side, this is News 12 First at 5. The weather is heating up as summer approaches, but it's not just record temperatures we'll be tracking this year. We're also climbing the charts when it comes to air pollution. You're looking at scenes from last year when winds blew wildfire smoke all the way here from the west. But this sort of haze, it wasn't unusual. In a State of the Air report released just last month, the Garden City came in at number 25 for year-round particle pollution trends. Sloan O'Connor live in the studio with us to break down what that means and what health experts say you should do. Well, the first thing experts recommend is to check the air quality index every day. The easy, easiest way to check it is just on the weather app on your phone. That's all the way down at the bottom if you scroll, or you can just search it. Something like this will come up. If it reads below 30, it's good, but above 50, they say stay indoors. And an index between 30 to 40, you can use your own judgment, but limit your time outdoors because exposure to these particles could have serious impacts on your health. You're looking at um, increased asthma attacks, but also you know, long-term um, possibilities for heart disease or could lead to premature death, exacerbations of chronic diseases. And even if, like for pregnant individuals, could lead to other sort of reproductive or developmental harm. The goal of the State of the Air report is to encourage us to be aware of our air quality. Also, to take necessary precautions, especially those at risk with asthma, COPD, children, pregnant women, and elderly people. If there's a day with a bad air quality index, experts have a few recommendations. Well, in the summer, um, don't mow your lawn at peak times during the day or fill your car full of gas at peak days. The report looks at two of the most widespread air pollutants, fine particles and ozone. The report says our pollution is mainly from industrial and power plant emissions, burning fossil fuels from cars, construction, even pollen and humidity. It explains while daily particle pollution levels aren't that high, being here on a long-term basis can be more damaging to your health. I mean, it certainly is very concerning being in the top 25 list because that, what that means is that the everyday citizen that's living in the Augusta metropolitan area are being exposed to particle pollution. And one of our local pulmonologists says if you have concerns, they're here to help. If it's severe, can't breathe, if you're breathing more than 10, 12 times per minute, basically you're having difficulty getting air, then definitely call a doctor or go to the urgent care. And Riley, they say that this time of year as we transition from springtime to summertime and things start heating up, it really does start to impact some of that quality. Absolutely. When Once we start heating up for the summertime, it actually leads to a chemical reaction and it creates what we call ground ozone. And that's the high pollutants that causes breathing issues for people with uh, respiratory problems. At the moment, we are at a green level. So there's no bad air quality out there now. But as we continue to heat up through the summertime, we'll likely see a few of those code orange days. Definitely see in this time of year so definitely be aware and check the air index like you're mentioning and we are seeing some pretty warm temperatures out there this afternoon actually hitting the mid to upper 80s so if you think this is warm we're actually getting even hotter for the rest of the week and expecting those temps to stay most likely into the 90s as we get over the next couple of afternoons but are we going to go to weather here or are we staying right here I guess not. All right. Well, so Sloan, the air index, it is good right now. But it's all of these are at the Salvation Army Croc Center. Today, the special grand jury selection will begin to investigate former President Trump's possible interference in Georgia's 2020 election. In preparation, they're ramping up security measures around the Fulton County Courthouse. The criminal probe centers on that phone call between former President Trump and Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger when the president told him to find votes. A special grand jury would be able to issue subpoenas to people who would otherwise refuse to cooperate. I plan to use um, the power of the law. We are all citizens, um, Mr. Trump, just as every other American citizen is entitled to dignity. He's entitled to be treated fairly. He will be treated fairly in this jurisdiction, but I plan to do my job, and my job is to make sure that we get the evidence that gives us the truth. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis will take the information gathered by the special grand jury and then decide whether to seek an indictment from a regular grand jury. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and July will bring some changes to the way you can access mental health care. Washington Bureau Chief Jacqueline Policastro tells us about the new phone number for the suicide prevention hotline and concerns over funding. It takes just three numbers to get help in an emergency. And starting in July, that's all it will take to call for support during a mental health crisis, too. People in distress can soon dial 988 to be connected to a local crisis center from the National Suicide Prevention 
Lifeline. 988 really represents this opportunity for us to destigmatize reaching out for help. When 988 goes live, the Lifeline team thinks the number of calls for help over the course of a year will increase by 5 million. Nearly 50,000 Americans die by suicide every year. After accidents, it's the second leading cause of death for preteens and young adults. Hannah Wesolowski from the National Alliance on Mental Illness believes the new hotline number will have a major impact, but warns some states may not be ready to handle the influx of calls. There's a real fear that people who live in certain areas are going to fall further behind. The Department of Health and Human Services contributed $282 million to assist nationwide, but Wesolowski wants more support from the federal government. We need to make sure our mental health system is sound and ready to deal with, with events like the pandemic. Texas Senator John Cornyn is one of the lawmakers on Capitol Hill, leading the charge to direct more money to local crisis centers. The demand is not going down, it's, it's going up. He's sponsoring legislation to increase federal funding by $42.8 million a year. The bill also aims to spread awareness for the hotline and improve access for low-income users by making calls free on prepaid phone plans. 988 is set to go live on July 16th. In Washington, I'm Jacqueline Paul Castro. 988 is not active yet for now. If you or if you know someone in crisis, you can call the Suicide Prevention Lifeline at the number on your screen. You can also text the word HOME, H-O-M-E, to 741-741. Some of us may seem like they live in another world, but they face some of the same challenges we all do. While they're sharing their stories ahead on News 12 First at 5. Riley? And most of us have stayed dry this afternoon, but storm chances will be with us most days this week. Update on radar and our forecast just after the break. Time and death. Stand up and fight against Joe Biden now. We're... Ten times brighter than a full moon. Last week, people in parts of the South heard a loud boom and then saw a fireball streaking across the sky. NASA says more than 30 people in Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi reported seeing this unusually bright meteor. Scientists say the meteor was actually moving 55,000 miles per hour and then breaking into pieces as it, as it hit our atmosphere. The blue arrow showing the track it took coming in. And as it split apart, it generated enough energy, get this, to create shock waves spreading to the ground. That's what made the booms and the vibrations. And as you can imagine, it had people all afraid. Sure. I mean, that we were under attack. Everybody calling in. Right, but thank goodness it was just space, but still. I'd love Ooh. to see that. I know, that. I bet that was really cool. And I mean, just last week, I think we had one of the space launch crews that came back into the atmosphere, and they made a big sonic boom that was heard across uh, Metro Atlanta and portions of South Carolina. So usually we're thinking of SpaceX making this stuff, but that was just a regular old meteor. That's scary, though. I oh, mean, yeah. when you don't know that it's coming, when it's not a scheduled re-entry like that, and it's just seemingly out of the blue. And for one to make a boom like that, yeah. that's pretty rare. I, I, I don't hear about that happening all too, all too often. So. Look up. you got to look up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we do have a few clouds in the night sky, too. All right, thank you, Riley. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and to honor the month, a group is launching Dare to Share. It's a campaign where celebrities share their own struggles with mental health. Lady Gillette shows us it's all part of an effort to encourage talking about mental health. In my early 20s, I used to get pretty uh, awful panic attacks. Grammy winner Pink is part of a new campaign and aimed at children to help destigmatize mental health, health issues. Just telling someone about it made me feel better. According to the CDC, ADHD, anxiety, depression, and behavior problems are the most commonly diagnosed mental health disorders in children. Among U.S. children aged 12 to 17, one in five had experienced a major depressive episode. We want to monitor to make sure that they're functioning, right? So if this goes on for, say, two weeks of a child being consistently sad and down and not interested in things they used to enjoy, then we might think, oh, this is starting to seem like a depressive episode and not just a momentary setback. Jamie Howard is a senior clinical psychologist from the Child Mind Institute. She says when talking to children about mental health, Parents shouldn't jump in with solutions. They should ask open-ended questions and continue checking in. With empathy and earnestness, ask, like, so so tell me what's going on. I've noticed you haven't been spending time with your friends lately, or I've noticed your grades seem to be slipping. And don't jump to sort of 
reprimanding them, but say, what's going on? Mental health experts also say parents shouldn't be afraid to broach the topic of suicide with their kids, since it is the leading cause of death among teenagers. If someone is not suicidal and you say to them, hey, have you been thinking about killing yourself? They will, they will not think, oh, no, I wasn't, but now I am. That's not how that works. Half of mental health disorders begin before age 14. So experts say start conversations early. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, New York. And early, earlier this month, the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommended kids be screened as early as eight years old. Summer is approaching, which means trips to the beach, but we're not the only ones making use of the sand. Coming up, what to know as sea turtle nesting season begins, just after the break. Sea turtle nesting season is officially underway. Loggerhead sea turtles will soon be coming ashore to lay their eggs. If you're lucky, you'll see one at night. They're protected under the Endangered Species Act, and rangers work all summer long protecting those nests. And sometimes that means moving them to a state park where the beach is darker and safer, giving those sea turtles a better chance for survival. But give them space and don't disturb those nests out there. The next couple of weeks could be make or break for a push to break up South Carolina's Department of Health and Environmental Control better known as DHEC. The bill that would do this has already passed through the state Senate without a single vote against it. Our state house reporter Mary Green joins us now live in Columbia. So Mary, despite strong support in the Senate, the bill is now getting some pushback as it works its way. Take me back to New York. Take me back to New York. 